In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Welcome to our study on the book of Sirach, also known as the book of Ben Sirah. And we're going to chapter two. We're going, we're going to walk through chapters two and three. Boy, there's a lot to see in Ben Sirah or Sirach. I like to call him Ben Sirah after the Hebrew name. Um, so just know that I'm referring to the same book, Sirach, Ben Sirah. And so in chapter two, he talks about temptation or trial. And there's a lot we can learn from this. He's, uh, if you start off here in verse one, he says, my son, if you come forward to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for, tr for temptation. It could also be translated trial. What's really interesting here is in the wisdom tradition, you see this, this type of address. The person being spoken to is spoken to as a son or a daughter per se. And so you'll find this a lot in the book of Proverbs. If you go back and you look at the book of Exodus, Israel is called the Lord's firstborn son. Exodus chapter 4, 21 to 23, go to the Pharaoh and, and tell Pharaoh, Israel is my firstborn son, let my son go. So at one level, you, you can look at this and say, wow, you know, in at one sense, God is personified as a father and Israel is personified as a mother. You see this especially in the book of Isaiah with the concept of Zion, mother Zion. But also you can look at this at maybe the level of the domestic church where every father and every mother should instruct their sons and daughters in wisdom. Um, and so, you know, when you, when you look at Ben Sirah, Ben Sirah the sage, he's addressing the reader as a potential son or daughter. My son, if you come forward to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for temptation or trial. We are going to have trial after trial as we come forward to serve the Lord. Set your heart right and be steadfast. Do not be hasty in time of calamity. In other words, you have to be patient when there's temptation. Cleave to him and do not depart. Now, the concept of cleaving to, to the Lord, you find that in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Deuteronomy, where it talks about cleaving to the Lord. It's marriage imagery. And, and just as we were told in the book of Genesis that Eve would cleave to her husband, in the same way Israel should cleave to the Lord. They should, they should cling to the Lord and not, you know, go after other gods, so to say. So he says, cleave to him and do not depart that you may be honored at the end of your life. Notice how the focus is on the end of your life. Accept whatever is brought to you and in changes that humble you, be patient. And the concept here is really simple. Don't overreact. That's where people get into a lot of problems. They're, they're not patient. They're not able to wait and they overreact and they get into huge problems. Uh, he says that gold is tested in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of humi humiliation. Trust in him and he will help you and he will help you make your way straight and hope in him. So some of this is borrowed from the book of Proverbs. For instance, the concept of gold being tested in fire, it's an image of how those who are righteous, they go through trials and tribulations, and essentially they grow in faith and righteousness. Through all of our trials, we actually grow stronger in the faith. And it's similar to gold. Every time you put it through fire, the impurities rise to the top because gold is a very heavy metal. Gold goes to the bottom, the impurities go to the top, and you have to keep continually heat it up and cool it down, heat it up and cool it down, scrape off the uh, less valuable metals from the top, and after a while, you have 18 karat gold. Then you keep the process going of heating it up and cooling it down and scrape off those metals from the top, and then you have 20 karat gold. And you keep going until you have 24 karat gold. In the same way, through all the trials that we go through, the Lord is purifying our faith and helping us to trust in him. So verse six talks about trusting in the Lord who will make straight our paths. This seems to also come from Proverbs chapter three, verses five through six. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart on your own intelligence, do not rely. In all your ways be mindful of him and he will make straight your paths. So you can see how Ben Sirah is borrowing from the book of Proverbs. 
He's complementing what we find in Proverbs. Then there's a threefold exhortation to those who fear the Lord. What should they do? They should wait for God's mercy. They should have faith in him. They should hope for good things, eternal joy and mercy. The concept of waiting on the Lord is very important. You find this in Psalm 40. And the idea is you don't overreact. A good example would be in the book of 1 Samuel. If you go to 1 Samuel, right around chapter 13, you'll see that Saul was waiting for the prophet Samuel. He wanted Samuel to offer a sacrifice before he went to battle. He lost his patience. He forced this into action and he offered the sacrifice himself. And then Samuel showed up and it was kind of like, mm, what are you doing? Are you trying to manipulate God here? And waiting requires great patience. We have to endure trials, sometimes suffering. Don't overreact, always wait. Especially um, when you feel like saying something or doing something, stop, wait, pray over it. And you'll often see, boy, it's a good thing I did wait. And so Ben Sira tells us to consider the ancient generations. This is beautiful. Look at the past generations. Who trusted in the Lord and was dishonored? Who remained in the fear of the Lord and was forsaken? Who called on him and was disregarded? Similar questions were posed in the book of Job. If you look closely at the book of Job, you will find similar questions. And this YouTube channel goes through chapters of the Bible. So if you want to go uh, look on the playlist, you can find the videos on the book of Job and other biblical studies where I go through chapters of the Bible. So this is the channel you wanna to subscribe to if you really wanna walk through scripture and know its theology. So what's the difference here with Ben Sira? Look at the questions that are being asked. Who trusted in the Lord and was dishonored? Well, Ben Sira is saying, first and foremost, look, we're going to go through trials. So we have to endure those trials. The friends of Job were asking similar questions, but simply assuming if this is happening to you, Job, and you're suffering so greatly, you must have done something wrong. So you can really see how Ben Sirah is very different than the three friends of Job who tried to essentially condemn him for his suffering and say that, you know, you must have sinned because look at what's going on with you. Ben Sirah is saying the opposite. He's saying, don't be surprised when you have trials. Look at those past generations. Look at Moses. Look at the prophets. Look at what they endured. And also look at Job. So he says the Lord is compassionate and merciful. We find that in Exodus 34, 6 through 9, when the Lord hid Moses in the cleft of the rock and passed by. And so one must read 2.10, uh, Ben Sirah 2.10, with the previous verses, especially Ben Sirah's instruction to wait for the Lord's mercy. Be patient, my brothers and sisters, in the trials that you have. Ben Sirah chapter two can teach us a lot. And especially the concept of considering ancient generations. We wanna develop a habit of reading scripture. Keep the Bible open at home. Put the scriptures in a place where you will always be looking at them. And don't let dust cover those pages. In other words, make sure the pages are clean because you're moving them. And so this is something that we can do in our in our homes and build good habits of reading scripture and also meditating on scripture. Ben Sira also offers three woes. He says, woe to those who have a timid heart. In other words, those who have a timid heart, they really don't understand the, fa the fear of the Lord. They're going to fall into sin very easily. Woe to the faint of heart. Now, this is a person that you can't trust, the one who has the, who is faint of heart. There's no shelter in such a person. Woe to those who have lost endurance. The word for endurance could also be translated perseverance, hupomone. It's actually a common term that you find in the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. And so the ones who don't have endurance, they're simply going to give up or fall into sin. And so in Ben Sira 2.15, those who fear the Lord will prepare for the coming trials. So the ones who truly have the fear of the Lord, they will prepare for temptation. They will be ready and they will understand that in the end of temptation, they will receive 
mercy. So my brothers and sisters, let's encourage each other when we find ourselves in trial. If you have a friend who's going through a very difficult trial, you can sit down and read Ben Sira chapter two with them. Now we're gonna move on to chapter three. And notice that once again, we have this father-son type of advice or you know the advice of a parent. So if you go to chapter three, look at what it says. It says, listen to me, your father, O children, and act accordingly that you may be kept in safety. And it, this chapter is beautiful for those who want to understand how they should honor their parents. For the Lord honored the father above the children. He confirmed the right of the mother over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sin. And whoever glorifies his mother is like one who lays up treasure. Now, what do we mean by atoning for sin? Obviously, uh, um, it, you know, you have to read this in context. Ben Sira is underlining how one will be blessed if they truly honor their mother and their father. He's looking at the very first commandment that's given regarding human relationships, the relationships that we have with other humans. So the first commandments, they deal with our relationship with God, uh, which means having no other gods, keeping the Sabbath, keeping the Lord's day, uh, and so forth. And then the, the commandments that follow deal with the relationship that we have with others. The very first one is honor your mother and father, and so or honor your father and mother. And so Ben Sira underlines the importance of this honor that we should have towards our parents. We live in a society that doesn't respect elderly. It doesn't know how to honor people in authority. And especially we see young people don't have respect for their parents. Those who have respect for God will have respect for their parents. If you want your children to honor you, you first need to teach them to honor God. If you do not teach them to honor God, it's likely that they will not have the respect for you that they should have. Verse five in chapter three says, whoever honors his father will be gladdened by his own children. And when he prays, he will be heard. Notice what he's saying, your prayer will be heard. Whoever glorifies his father will have a long life and whoever obeys the Lord will refresh his mother. He will serve his parents as his masters. Honor your father by word and deed that a blessing from him may come upon you. Now, a lot of this recalls situations in the past. You know, you can go back to the patriarchs when they bless their children. If you go back to the blessing of Jacob in chapter 49, the first three children, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, they dishonored their father. And so, and so Judah, the fourth child in Genesis 49 verses 9 through 10, he received the greater blessing because his older brothers, dis, they basically disrespected or dishonored their father. So in verse 12, it says, O oh, son, help your father in his old age, and do not grieve him as long as he lives. Even if he is lacking in understanding, show forbearance in all your strength. Do not despise him. I think Ben Sirah verse 12 and 13 is important today because a lot a lot of people just simply live longer today and for that very reason sometimes they they don't have their you know their 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 mind completely with them when they get older and so we have to be patient with our parents especially when they get older and so a couple of things to consider here ben sira says all these things about honoring a mother and father and it all has to be seen as god is going to bless this person it atones for sins. It preserves him from sin. When he prays, his prayer is heard. He who honors his mother stores up riches. The one who honors his father is blessed with children. He will live a long life and he will bring comfort to his mother uh, for a mother's great desire is to see the unity of the family. In, in verses 12 and 13 and 14, he says something so important for modern cultures, be patient with your parents, especially when they get older. As a priest, I can tell you, many people come to me and they say, my parents are driving me crazy. They're getting older. They're over 70, 80, 90, and so forth. And we, we just have to say, look, you need to be patient to them. They were patient when they were raising you. Can you be patient to them? 
And so Ben Sira also talks about humility. He urges all children of wisdom to perform their duties in humility. Humility should be the guiding principle for all of our activities in life. Humility is something that people don't see, but God notices humility. So Ben Sira warns, the greater you are, the more you must be humble. You will find favor with God. And so we must remember that Moses was called the most humble man on the face of the earth. You can find that in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. So we must continually examine our lives, reflecting on how we can become more humble. So if you go to the New Testament in a similar manner, Jesus teaches us that the one who wishes to be great in the kingdom must become a servant of all. Jesus also teaches that the one who humbles himself will be exalted. And Ben Sira adds that the humble will find favor in the sight of the Lord. In Israel's history, this was true, as I told you, Moses was rejected by the people, but he, but God considered him the most humble man on the face of the earth. David in Psalm 132 talks about how he is humble, like a child in the uh, who's been nursed by his mother. And so these are beautiful examples David's prayer for forgiveness, Psalm 51, is also a prayer where he humbly turns to the Lord asking for forgiveness. Mary consi considered herself the handmaid of the Lord, a humble image of service. And also she told in her Magnificat, she noted God raises up the humble and he brings down the prideful. So in many cases in the New Testament, we see how the Lord exalts those who have faith and who are humble servants. So the perspective of a father and a mother encouraging their son or daughter is beautiful because in the in the book of Sirach or Ben Sirah, this wisdom is presented from the perspective of a loving parent who cares about the spiritual welfare of their children, the eternal salvation of their children. And this is how parents must be with their children. They have to always be praying for the eternal salvation of their children caring for the spiritual welfare of their children. So in verse three, uh, in chapter three, verse 20, Ben Sirah says that the might of the Lord is great, but he is magnified in the humble. This is really amazing to think about. God magnifies himself in his humble people, in his humble servants. Go back and look at the stories of all the great biblical heroes, and you will see how God magnified himself in the humble. If you go to Philippians chapter 2, you see a great example because Paul talks about Jesus emptying himself, how Jesus emptied himself. We call that the kenosis, the act of emptying himself so that he can become like us in all things and do the Father's will. So I think you have the ultimate example of humility if you look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, and Paul talks about how though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself so that he could become like us in all things. Wow, that's humility. So Ben Sira says, do not seek what is too sublime, what is too difficult. Once again, you find that in Psalm 131, where David talks about how he doesn't seek things that are beyond himself. Also in, in 325 to 31, Ben Sira tells us that the rebellious will suffer. And in this sense, the rebellious are those who are proud and do, who do not wish to conform their lives to God's will. So be humble and conform your life to the Lord's will. Don't be stubborn. Don't be proud. So in many ways, uh, such afflictions could be understand, understood as an appeal to acknowledge what the fruits of our own conduct and product and our pride have produced. So when we suffer, let's be humble and let's not fall into temptation. And in accepting whatever difficulty we have with humility, let us ask the Lord for his guidance. And so the one who is intelligent will ponder the parable. Ben Sirius says in 329, this is really amazing. The one who would ponder a parable is intelligent because in the New Testament, Jesus comes and he speaks in parables. So those who knew Ben Sira, who explained that the man who is intelligent, the woman who is intelligent, they're going to ponder the parable. They're going to think about the parable. 
those who knew Ben Sira's wisdom, they would have said, ah, this is what I should do when they heard Jesus giving parables. He also talks a lot about almsgiving, you know, and he says that almsgiving in a certain way can atone for sin. Well, almsgiving was a charitable action towards the poor over and above the 10%, the tide that was required. So almsgiving was a real act of charity. The book of Tobit talks a lot about almsgiving as well. You can look at Tobit 12, eight through nine. Almsgiving was ideally an act of love, which, which would help others understand God's mercy. See Luke 636 and also Peter, tells us that love covers a multitude of sins, 1 Peter 4, 8. And so the concept of almsgiving is you're going beyond just what's required to share God's love with those who are suffering. So you find this in many other places throughout the Hebrew scriptures. I would finish chapter 3 by saying, honor your mother and father, be humble, ponder the parable, and go out of your way to share the love of God with others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.